We don't want any. Come on in. Hi, Dad. Girl Scout cookies? Almost. Damn. Damn. All right. So we are currently in the containment crew uh, workshop. Office and workshop, labs. everything all at once. Oh, no, labs is John's basement. All right, so uh, let's do a quick tour. What's going on? Uh, let's start over here and work our way around. Well, we've got a computer set up over here. With our screens nice and black. You can pretend that there's computing going on there. Uh, moving this way, we've got our printers printing away, making sure that we got everybody's uh, orders printed and product ready for end war and end war prep is uh, very time consuming uh, you want to tell me what these printers are and why you pick these um, these are Rostock V2 and V3 Delta printers they are significantly quicker especially when it comes to ABS uh, just the material we print in for the most part. Well, that's something that's entirely, actually. That's something that's pretty exclusive to you guys, as far as I know in the Nerf community. Is yeah, that I can't think, think of where other than well, slide up is no longer. No, I, I can't think of anyone that's still printing in the community that prints in ABS, though. You yeah. know, it's it's more difficult, but it does provide better heat resistance, especially if you're playing out in the summer on a very hot day, or you leave a blaster in the car. Bit more of it, you can easily melt the cage in the middle of the summer. We've definitely had PLA melt on us from things that we've gotten elsewhere. Um, well, moving on to what looks like a workbench, a workstation. It does look an awful lot like a workbench, Dennis. Sometimes it's a workbench. <laughs> Sometimes it even has work done on it. Yeah. I mean, over here you've got a bunch of screws, you know, necessary for assembling different things, something like battery door screws or for uh, tack rail mount pieces, accessories, and stuff like that. Screwdrivers, because there's all sorts of screw sizes used that we need. Uh, everything from pliers to flush cutters, especially for wire work. You know, these are great for cutting plastic shells when you're trying to mod blasters. It's obvious that we've got well cut up blasters on the wall. Mostly so that we can test fit and make sure that everybody's parts go out yep. fitting before they leave here. Yep, we try and test fit all the cages and the battery doors before they go out and make sure everything fits correctly. So these don't even have screws in them, they just I think we might have just picked up the one that does. Pop right open. And there you go, there's a cage for testing, although that's uh a little different. I think that was a filament test. Might have been. It makes it really easy to be able to pop things open and make sure everything fits correctly before it gets shipped out. Over here, tons of blaster parts things, everything from springs and tack kits to flywheels. We got cyclones and stentos and you know blaster parts flywheels. Hiding back there's machete keeping good watch over everything. Don't forget that. Don't think you can say it. Oh, no matter what he does. No matter what he does. Wait, wait. In the top corner, it does say machete. Sort of. <laughs> <laughs> A little bit. Well, let's be honest. There's something far more important on the next segment of wall. Oh, absolutely. It's, I mean, it'll be obvious as Dennis gets closer and closer and closer. Charles is wearing the correct shirt today. That's because Go Slow Taco, best team from Endwar. So that's just a board, you know, board holding a bunch of different blasters. Some of these are current use, some of these are current projects being worked on. Like Charles's Desolator that get, he uses at most games. Yep. That's my baby. Um, Prep table. Gun. You've got pile of orders ready to be shipped out. Almost ready to be shipped out. Almost ready to be shipped out. Um, bunch of worker products over here. More packaging. Unopened filament. New in box blasters. Mm -hmm. 
do blaster box without blaster. Um, more of our power tack gear, blaster parts tack gear, shipping paper, pile O motors. It's a lot of motors. There's some motors there, and then more motors next to it, and then even more motors behind it. I mean, there's more motors hiding in the drawer, but he hasn't seen those. I'm going to go back to the drawer real quick. There's even more motors there. You know, nicely organized in a little compartment slot. We can easily grab what was needed for an order. Uh, moving around, we have the X car, which you guys haven't seen much out of it yet. We're still working on what exactly we're going to do with it, but it's a fun machine. Uh, that's about it. Uh, now I was told you guys have something special to show off Sweet that uh, is going to be premiered at Endor slash FoamCon this year. There's nothing extra special other than an Endor exclusive. We do have these containment cages uh, printed in a uh, bright electric green. That is the only thing that's ever been printed for sale in this color. So that will be an exclusive. They are all 43 cages. Perfect for each They will be paired with this year's Edward exclusive flywheels. As well as the flywheels will be offered by themselves. Pictured here. No, no, right there. You want to come to that. Look at those wheels. <laughs> Uh, yeah. So, real quick, I guess, since this took not very long at all, considering how small this area is, can you guys move closer? Um, so, uh, tell me a bit about you two and how you got into this hobby. I don't think they want to know the story of how you got into this hobby. I mean, it's not that scary, but he did show up to my house for our first invitation of going to Bing. He fell asleep in the shower. He fell asleep in the shower. <laughs> so his first time meeting me outside of class was walking up to a random house, ringing the doorbell at 6 o'clock in the morning, and asking for someone who was asleep in the shower that he did not know was asleep in the shower. But I had a blast after that. It was an addiction right from there. <laughs> I mean, I've been playing a little longer than that. I, uh, I attended Binghamton University for a while and was playing HBZ there. Modding was an almost a necessary part of it. Meeting people like Random Shadow and Gnome of Doom, being able to play with them and, and travel around. My first Penn State was in uh, the spring of 2011. And uh, it just spiraled out of control from there. So. From my memory, Containment Crew was originally just like a group of people who played HVZ and was not a oh, web yeah. store. Absolutely. No. There's still a Facebook kind of... group, a secret group on Facebook with, I don't know, 20 people? No, something like that. Something like 20 people that we brought together that we would travel to. Yeah, you know, basically what happened was we, were, we formed the group at the same time as the ZAL. The ZAL took off. We decided to just be us. Decided to make a YouTube channel, which very few people might even know about anymore. And link in the description. Don't link in the description. <laughs> we haven't, been, we haven't had a video in two in like two years. It had a fair amount of subscribers. The content was pretty good, but you know he's lying about the content being good. I liked John's content. We will. <laughs> oh, you will. That's what you should like. <laughs> um. Then we actually saw on Facebook a company by the name of Slidev, based out of Australia, was looking for a U.S. distributor. John had gotten into uh, 3D printing and was moving along, and we decided to see what we could do. So we started off by selling Slidev products, then Blaster Parts reached out to us about selling their products, then Big Test Battle reached out to us about selling their products. And um, it's continued to grow ever since. It's continued to grow ever since. 
We still have our original printer. It's uh, rocking away with a cage right there. V2 has been V2. going for three and a half years now. Currently shows, I think, like 280 days of print time on it. And that's after resets to the firmware. So really, it's got almost a full year of printing nonstop. And that was reset sometime in the last year. Two years ago. Yeah, two years ago. Yeah. So, you know, keep the printers printing, keep things designing, try and get new product out. I'm trying to think of other questions. I feel like this is pretty short. I've only been recording for 10 minutes. But I guess, yeah, we'll do, we can do a full length podcast at some point in the near future. Leave your questions down below and, uh, you guys want to know? yeah, and we'll, we'll ask containment crew lots of questions. Yep. I mean, we won't know any of the answers, but you're welcome. Now. <laughs>